This year, the movie Contagion has received well-deserved attention while also feeling perhaps a bit too close to home. It was first released in 2011 and it has proved tragically to be a prescient film. It has called attention to the risks and to the dangers of a lethal airborne virus that first appeared in Asia. Here's the trailer. It's a groundbreaking ceremony for a new factory. Did you mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No. She said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Matt. Mom? No, no, uh, uh, go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. Is she before? had a history of seizures? No, no, no. Allergies? No. As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Right. I said, can I go talk to her? Mr. Amoff, your wife is dead. What are you talking about? Okay. What happened to her? What happened to her? Is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu? Is that what we're looking at? Someone doesn't have to weaponize the bird flu. The birds are doing that. Watch this. It's transmission. So we just need to know which direction. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. People will panic. Get away! People tip over. The truth is being kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. Hello. I need you to get me the names of everyone who serviced this room. It's an emergency. You can't panic now. I know. I'm gonna get you home. I got people too, Dr. Cheever. We all do. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anyone. Stay away from other people. The visitor comes. We're not sick! It's figuring us out faster than we're figuring it out. It's mutated. We're proud to honor Contagion with a 2020 AAM award and delighted to have four members of the team with us now. Scott Burns wrote the film's screenplay and came up with the concept. Larry Brilliant and Ian Lipkin, both distinguished scientists with extensive experience in epidemiology, were science advisors to the film. And Jennifer Ely played the role of Dr. Ali Hextall, the scientist who helps discover this vaccine that literally saves mankind. Congratulations to all of you on the award. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Scott, I wanna start with Thank you. You. Um, you know, um, you know, watching the film now, it's, it's anxiety inducing um, because of the moment that we are in. It is so uh, reminiscent, so many points in it to the experience we're having now. At the time though, how difficult was it to convince Hollywood to sign off and produce this film? Well, Jeff had a foundation that had a number of specific interests and one of them was pandemic illness. And when Jeff found out that I was curious, that I was curious about this and I wanted to write a script, he was very eager to get involved and support that. And the first person he directed me to was Larry. And I, I went up to the Bay Area and I had lunch with Larry and at the end of lunch, we both found ourselves in the men's room. And he sort of was talking to me while I was washing my hands and I did what a lot of us do. And in the middle of it, he looked at me and he said, you're not washing your thumbs. Um, and I knew at that point that he was the right, the right person for me to work with on this. Um, you know, he obviously had done amazing work on planet earth to, uh, help eradicate smallpox. And Larry said, you know, the first person you should go and see is Ian Lipkin in New York, because he's probably the best virologist in the world. And um, 
next thing I knew, I found myself in New York uh, with Ian, and I asked him if he would help me on the film. And the deal that we made was that we wouldn't play Hollywood with the science, that he would help me as long as the arrangement was that everyone would take the science seriously and that we would commit to having scientists be heroes. Um, and we would show how a public health infrastructure might work um, in a functional society. Jennifer, you said you modeled your character on one scientist, and that was Ian. How did you prepare? What was that process to be Ian? Ian was the first scientist I met, I suppose, in my life. And I went to Columbia and I spent a day or two half days um, working with people there and mashing up pig brain and DNA sequencing and I don't know what I did, but it was absolutely fabulous and I loved it. Um, and now in 2020, we're in an environment where we see this phenomenon uh, that didn't exist in the film, but it, it is very real in real life, which is distrust of the science and distrust of the vaccines um, among a large portion of the public. Do you feel now that Hollywood should help sort of that public relations battle to urge the public to go take that shot in the arm? Well, I, I don't know. I, do, I don't know. I don't know who people would listen to right now. Um, I mean, I, I hope people listen to the scientists. And I think that's what the film was saying. It wasn't really Hollywood. It was um, Scott and, and Stephen um, sort of trying to ask the world to to listen to the science and to and to trust it and to believe it and to see what was what could potentially or inevitably would happen. Larry, who how do you do that? Um, and what do you think the message that you hoped would have been received in 2011 was and, and that you think needs to be heard now? What we hope by uh, doing not a documentary, which has its place, but doesn't have the magic of a scripted show with wonderful actors like Jennifer and, and incredible writers like Scott. Um, we wanted to do something that had life and legs and uh, could help persuade people how important it was to understand that this odorless, tasteless, invisible thing called a virus could jump from an animal to humans and then be all over the world. That's a very difficult concept for anybody to, to grasp. But we wanted to do it in a way that had vivid characters and memories that people could, could take home and talk about, but that had impeccable science. Um, but would this pass the smell test if it was looked at by a peer reviewed scientific review? And, and a couple of uh, uh, good journals actually reviewed it as if it was a piece of science. And we did pretty good on that. Dr. Lipkin, I mean, how do you, what do you think about how you convince the public? I mean, a vaccine is only good as the number of vaccinations that follow up. So first of all, um, we had Tony Fauci to the premiere in New York, one of the premieres. And his one critique was that the time frame for the development and deployment of the vaccine <laughs> was unrealistically fast. And my comment to him at the time was, well, it had better become realistic because that's the time frame we're gonna need. And you see now we have Operation Warp Speed that has, as you've said, delivered the vaccine in rapid time. I just wanna say something about um, some of the things that Scott anticipated that don't really get heralded sufficiently. One of them, for example, is the role of the web in disseminating information and misinformation. So there's this scene where Jude Law is talking to a newspaper reporter and trying to get her attention. Uh, and he says, well, you're just a blogger. Well, bloggers have become very important, right? You have the misinformation in the film, it's for Scythia. In our current world, it's hydroxychloroquine. Uh, there are examples of that sort. And the idea that there really were two classes of citizens, those who are vaccinated and those who aren't, 
in the scene where you have the prom night and you show the, the vaccination ban. That sort of thing will play out over the next several months. That's going to be that vaccination passport. So it really is extraordinary, I think. I mean, Larry and I focused on the things that we knew, but Scott took it to a different level. He anticipated things that I'd never even thought about. Well, it was a wonderful film and a prescient one. I want to thank all of you. All, I want to thank all of you for coming.